We're on our way to the airport, We're going to Stillwater, Oklahoma, um, for the NCAA championship. It, it is an exciting meet, and you 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 train and compete to be in races like this. We always come in a bit as an underdog, but we usually always do better than we're ranked. It's also kind of the expectation for us to go to nationals, um, but it's always super fun and we're excited to see what we can do. We're looking for a pretty good day. I think this is a really hard course, so our team does pretty good on those, a lot of hills. It's really good for us to see it. I think it gives us some checkpoints, so when we write our race plans tonight, we kind of know what we want to do, where we want to be, and at what point in the race we want to do that. Keeps us organized and uh, keeps us focused. We've talked a lot about the course. Pretty iconic, um, and it's just exciting to finally be here. It's all running the rest of them with the wind coming back. It's pretty tough, but we ran on a tough course at Big Tens. Uh, I think similar, similar hills really, so um, I don't think it's anything that we haven't done before, um, so I'm not too worried about it. Because they believe so much in one another and the process and what we've been building, I think if you were to ask a lot of them at the start of the year, if they thought we would get to this point, you might have gotten some mixed answers, but what you would have gotten out of them was that they were gonna be prepared to fight and do everything they could to get here, and they're gonna have that same mentality tomorrow. Welcome to the 2022 NCAA Cross Country Championships. It is one of running's best days. It's the big dance. This is the place you wanna be. It is just gonna be an awesome day. Stay in character, run the race the way we know how to run. Trust one another, believe in one another, just like you've done all season. Whether it's suffer, whether it's team, grit, whatever your word is, that's what we're going to. Be in the fight, set yourself up, be a teammate all day long. Let's bring it in. Our team, our energy. Go green, go white, go state on three. One, two, three. Go, go green, green, go white, go state. A couple of Big Ten schools there, right? We've got uh, Sparty. And this one is 6,000 meter championship race is underway. Good job. So much fun to try to figure out where your team is, making sure you stay in that tight pack, especially when you are a team that needs to keep that pack close. This was really cool to race. Like I was thinking how much like I would want to be here like last year watching this on TV. So it was just so cool to actually be in the race. And I'm just really excited for our team like next year because all of us are coming back. I finished 33rd, so top 40 is All-American. Finishing 33rd from Michigan State, Katie Osinka. I'm really proud of top 40 and being on this team is super special and Everyone back home cheering us on and everyone here just fighting. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that we're just gonna come back even stronger next year. We knew this was gonna be a season of growth. We knew this was gonna be a season where they just had to go through doing something like winning a Big Ten team title. Turn around, running the regional, turn around, matching that energy again today. And sometimes you just have to go through it to be ready for the next thing. Their standards have gone up, and honestly, their sense of our, our team unity, our cohesion, it's the most cohesive team I've coached since being here at MSU. A year from now, it's going to be a different outcome. Two on two into the zone. They come to the top of the crease. Great save by St. Cyr. 
being at two programs previous to Michigan State, like Notre Dame and Quinnipiac, have a really strong culture. I think that was something I really wanted to look forward to if I was deciding to choose another year in college. The culture piece is huge. So for our program to grow and head in the right direction, he's seen some positives, he's seen some negatives, and he's a person that's not afraid to speak his mind, which you can really appreciate as a coach. He's seen a lot of things, and any way that we can help our program grow in the right direction, obviously we want to do that. Hey, Paul, I heard you broke machine today. Yeah, I don't know, some, some guys are saying different. For Dylan, uh, growing up, he always wanted to play. Uh, if it was not with me or her, his grandma playing mini stick and hockey, uh, that was going to see his friends and always find a way to play hockey everywhere he was. Started playing probably when I was five, six, seven, and then growing up, played both player and goalie. The reason why he liked the goalie, it's because he didn't like to sit on the bench. Selfishly, at my young age of, of 11, I didn't want to get off the ice, so goalie was kind of the one thing where I wasn't having to change. That kind of just grew into really enjoying the control that you have over a game. Obviously, there's times when that can be bad when you're not on your game, but ultimately, having that control, being able to steal a game, or really kind of having that pressure was something I really enjoyed. Back in 1992, my mom made an appearance for the Tampa Bay Lightning in an exhibition game as the only and first female to play in the NHL, which is obviously pretty cool and uh, a great experience, something that I came to appreciate when I was probably about 13 going back to play in the Quebec Pee Wee tournament. Obviously for Dylan, that was just his mom, but when he went to Quebec and he saw all the media that was around him, and then, you know, people asking him for his autograph and see the crowd of people that came and watch him play. I think that's when he realized the impact that I had in Quebec. And especially nowadays as the women's game is growing, uh, she kind of continues to be a, an influence in that area. I definitely think it's a great advantage for Dylan where his mom played at the highest level. She knows the position inside and out and she has some of her own experiences of playing the game, not only on the ice, but off the ice and how you might handle things. I think for Dylan, it, it's great to see where he's really blossomed into being our number one goalie and he's been challenged at his previous two destinations and his mom's background, she can talk to that like, hey, it's, it's a goalie, there's only one crease, there's only one net, like you gotta duke it out and you gotta stop the puck when you get in there. Here will try and clear it himself. He gets held in by Jones. Back hand, Levin. Oh, oh this one. What oh, a my save. God. Dylan oh, my God. Dylan St. Cyr, the Superman across the crease. And Dylan's national team experience was amazing. I think anytime you have a chance to play for your country, it's no doubt something that you should try and do. Traveling to Slovakia, Russia, Sweden. We did a few travels there, and then obviously being able to win the U18 World Championship was, I think, the biggest hockey achievement that we've had as a team. We didn't have the expectations that some teams had prior, but being able to pull that off was something really exciting. You go through those struggle, and then you finish your U18 year by winning the World Championship. I think that was a huge accomplishment, and it was cool to be able to be there in the final and share that with him, and I'm just proud of him. had four years at University of Notre Dame. The biggest thing that they kind of the preached there was it was a 40-year, not four-year decision. For me, I, I really put a high value on education, and I think that they had a great culture. Not being too far from home, it was a great mix of all of those things. Obviously, I really enjoyed the team and my teammates there, uh, as well as the coaching staff. I, I really had a great four-year experience there. and. Obviously, I think that's, that's something that helped me be the player I am today. Make, make sure we go to a C cut into shuffle on this one. Oh. 
When Dylan made a decision to go to Michigan State, I know the big part of him is to be part of that change and to really launch that program again. Leslie racing up, Gucciardi trying to stop him. Leslie right to his teammate. Nice save there. Dylan St. Cyr. I think there's a rich history behind Michigan State hockey, being someone who had grown up in, in Michigan most of their life. I think back in the 2000s and obviously 2007 when they won the national championship, knowing a couple players on that team. I think it's obviously a great experience to kind of fill those shoes. And all the way into the Michigan State oh. zone, right onto the doorstep. Locha against the boards, came back up top, bounces out in front, battle for it there, and the Spartans keep it out of the net. Nice job by St. Cyr. You don't spend six years in college hockey without going through the ups and downs, and I think for me, being able to use that experience to, to kind of help other guys here who may be going through similar experiences that I've had, at least I can hope to, to share those and maybe make that a little bit easier on them or maybe put into perspective kind of, kind of the situation that they're going through. Good block, good block. I think Michigan State and talking to Coach Nightingale when he was recruiting, a huge point of emphasis for him was to build out this culture and a strong culture here at, at Michigan State. Being part of the building blocks of a new era in Michigan State hockey I think is really exciting and had a lot of pull, as well as the coaching staff behind that. So I think the recruiting he did for the players and the coaching staff, obviously starting from the person and, and who those people are, obviously he did a great job of getting the right people as well as the talent that kind of goes along with it. Those were all really big pulls. I think that that's a really cool thing to be a part of now, kind of building up that program. Over the summer, I went to the Big Ten Women's Leadership Summit to celebrate Title IX and really just meet influential women and get a good idea of what Title IX meant and how it's impacting me and what I can do to further it. It was at the Big Ten headquarters in Rosemont, Illinois, and it was an opportunity to celebrate and bring all of the Big Ten schools together. Not only just celebrate, but discuss and learn from each other, and having some amazing speakers, some of the first women broadcasters, some of the first NFL coaches, listening to their stories and the influence they've had and what they've taken away from Title IX. Jackie Joyner Kersey was, oh my gosh, I mean, just listening to her talk about her experiences as an athlete, I could have listened to her talk for days on days on days. When I turned 14, saw the 76 Olympic Games on television, and at that time, I thought I was going to be a gymnast, you know, Nadia Kamenich. I'm like, oh, she's 13, she's making an Olympic team, maybe. But, uh, and even then, you know, our coaches said we had the potential, but it was always about working hard. She used to beat herself up a lot about like, I'm out of shape, I'm out of shape. And she, she knew she had asthma, but she couldn't accept that like, that might be something that she has to kind of work through. And just hearing her talk about how she pushed through all of that, the passion and just true desire to want to be great that came out of her, even just in the press conference, it really made you feel something and it was really amazing. Even 100%. Because sometimes, you know, I would give my best and my best was fifth or sixth place. Until I start to hear all these great women and what they've accomplished start speaking, did I really realize that it's kind of in my hands. Like if I want something to change, it's going to start with me. It's going to start with the other athletes here and using your voice. And these women took a chance to step out of their comfort zone. God had a different plan. God had a different plan. I got injured, played basketball, got injured, no longer could play. Um, so I had to figure some things out. I hope I'm able to contribute to a more well-rounded, equal playing field for women in sports. I think one person's not gonna solve it and I'm not gonna have a major impact, but if we all come together and really address the issue and fight for the little things, they start adding up to the big things that make it easier for people ahead of me. A change isn't gonna happen from just me. It's gonna come from my other Michigan State athletes. It's gonna come from the whole Big Ten. And it means a lot more if it's coming from more people. And those relationships are not only just for networking, 
for future endeavors and whatever that may be. But knowing that like you have a friend at another university and someone that's there supporting you like is really great. A lot of times you get kind of zoned in, tunnel vision on like what you're experiencing. And I think it's really important to just listen and like be present, really understand what, you know, people in the past dealt with and they didn't have the things that we have and um, we're just very blessed and I think it really did open my eyes to realize like be grateful for everything you have because a lot of people don't get to experience all this. I always talk to my grandma about her life and how her education has been a lot different and her opportunities were nowhere near mine and same with my mother and hearing about those struggles that I have been completely oblivious to. I think overall I know like it's not fair and it hasn't been fair. There were trailblazers who came before all of us who allowed individuals like me to be able to walk into spaces, into sports spaces and into educational spaces and have a place and see myself in that space and have opportunity. The Title IX law got me where I am today. Like I wouldn't be sitting in Michigan State being in our top eight as a coxswain. I would have never been here if it wasn't for that law being passed. Going to the event really showed me that there's so much out there to learn about and know, and you really can't do that without human connection and listening to other people and their experiences. And so that would probably be one of my biggest takeaways is just presence, listening to people, understanding, getting to know different people, and I, I really took that away from it. The one thing that has been major for me and through this whole process of the Big Ten Women's Leadership Summit is just the amount of support we need in creating like the platforms to have conversations is so important because without that Big Ten Leadership Summit like I would not have the tools I have currently to address it and I would not know how to create change or how to have those conversations in the future. I came to Michigan State looking for a family, and I definitely found that here. The amount of love that came from this group of girls so fast from the start was such a blessing and something that I wasn't expecting from the start. I feel like I've grown so much just from what you guys have poured into me. And I thank you so much for everything that you guys have given to, for me. And I just love you all so much. So I'm holding on to you guys in my heart forever. For the last five years, little freshman Becca came into Michigan State, wide-eyed, fearless. I had two goals in mind. Um, one was just to love people. And the other one was to show people that I'm more than just an athlete. And there's been so many trials. There's been countless head injuries, knee injuries, different things. Little freshman Becca would be so proud of the woman I am right now. Gratitude really comes to mind when it comes to my time at Michigan State. <laughs> Very grateful for the, the friends that it's given me and the, the teammates that turned family and my lifelong friends. The three of you have left a lasting impact, but we talk about setting the standard all the time, and they came in all summer long and pushed the envelope. They did it all year long. They did it to the staff, they did it to their teammates, they did it to the program, they did it within the department. And uh, we're all better because of you. And so we wish you just a beautiful future. May it continue to blossom, be bigger, better, and brighter, um, and always wear the green and white with pride. Love you guys. You know, I think just we want to be a winning hockey team with winning habits, so make sure that every time we get an opportunity to take a shift, we play winning hockey. Welcome to the Steve Cady Arena in Oxford, Ohio. It's time for round two between the Spartans of Michigan State and the Red Hawks of Miami University. Get the job done. Let's get out of here, boys. Go ground three. One, two, three, go three. Michigan State comes in 10-4-1 on the season after last night's 5-3 victory here in Miami. Shot and a goal for Michigan State. Carson Dorwart from the left circle, and the Spartans take the lead 1 0. And 
as they get a loose puck. Shot in, score. Michigan State with the big time blast. That was Dorwart along the right side. As the shot comes in from the left side, he shoots and scores. That is Dorwart once again with the hat trick. It has definitely been the Carson Dorwart show here. Three on one, Spartans into the oh! zone, backhand shot, goal for Michigan State. And a nice backhand in tight, up high, four nothing Michigan State. And the horn will sound a shutout win for Michigan State and Dylan St. Cyr. Michigan State four, Miami zero.